All right, let's start taking a crack at this. Um, I'll likely end up uploading a few versions of this. <clears throat> so here's uh, Melly Germany 9479's first comment um, on my video, I dare you say, show me how hardcore you are for the journey that I posted three months ago. She says, um, so everybody who doesn't want a family is either intellectually impaired or a psychopath. Um, we'll circle back around to that point after I make a few other points. I have many female friends who have no interest in having children. They are all normal, happy ladies who have a loving relationship with their parents and wider families. Okay, right there. Let's just start right there. <clears throat> Again, pardon me if I don't trust your idea of normal. Who are you to judge what's normal? I mean, since you want to get right down to picking apart my opinions on what people, most people in the world would want, then let's pick you apart, honey. Um, who are you to judge what's normal? Uh, and also I think, so normal, happy ladies who have loving relationships, a loving relationship with their parents and wider families. Um, I already made the point in one of my most recent videos that, okay, so, um, the point of life is not to be happy. The point of life, the meaning of life is to live a meaningful life. So the fact that they're happy is not important at all. I don't care if they're happy. Um, uh, so first of all, again, your, your, your gauge of what's normal, I don't trust that because again, as I've said, you have been commenting on my YouTube channel since I started posting about a network of child traffickers who commit incest. And by the way, I also have posted, um, in my, I've also posted, uh, in my, uh, WordPress blog. And I believe I made another a little video showing this, um, that a lot of my suspects, a lot of their bloodlines um, and or the names, you know, their surnames uh, can be traced back to Germany. They're typically of Caucasian. They're typically Caucasian and of German descent. You look like you're Caucasian, honey, and um, probably of German descent, particularly when you, your, your name on YouTube is Melly Germany, right? So again, um, another reason why I think you're probably a, a member of this network. Oh, and again, and the fact that you, so in your next comment, which I'll be picking that one apart, where you say you work with autistic kids. Wow. So I am posting a, about a network of people who traffic in children and abuse children. They go out of their way to get positions, employment in the world where they can mess with children. And they abuse their own children. And they're typically Caucasian and of German descent. You are Caucasian and of German descent, likely, based on your the photo, your appearance in the photo, and on your YouTube name. And you're claiming now that you work, you work with autistic people, maybe autistic adults, but I wouldn't be surprised if you also, do you work with children? And... Some, some people, depending on where they are on the spectrum, even if they're adult, an adult, if they're se severely autistic, they're very child-minded. So, yeah, um, I really do suspect that you are probably a part of this network, if not paid, um, a paid gang stalker. So, uh, yeah, yeah. That's why I'm I'm saying that you're stalking me is because like the gang stalking, like the incessant people, like nobody really commented on my YouTube channel and st until I started talking about the network of child traffickers and child abusers that I've been researching and writing about, right? And then suddenly I got this huge influx of people leaving like nasty comments on my YouTube channel. That's called gang stalking. There are groups of people that are paid to do that. So that's why I'm accusing you of stalking me. Um, 
So I think that you either, again, you're being paid to do this or more likely at this point, you're involved in the network. Um, yeah. So, and also, by the way, why do I also think that you're stalking me is because for the most part, usually people, let's face it, guys, anybody, everybody else out there listening and watching this, um, think about your habits on YouTube. You might have like a handful of well-known or fairly well-known YouTube channels um, where they have maybe like at least a few hundred thousand followers and they're like, they're pretty entertaining that you might watch pretty regularly. But for the most part, I think, I think most people, their, um, their habits on YouTube are, they watch just like a, a variety of things. I know personally, I've gotten really into some channels on YouTube for a short period of time, like a matter, a matter of a few weeks to maybe a few months. And then I, you know, I don't even remember them anymore. Like I know that there are lots of channels and, and things that I used to watch that I just don't even remember them anymore because there's so much content on YouTube. So the fact that you're still Miss Melly Germany consistently coming back to my YouTube channel after all this time, when I know YouTube is probably suggesting all this other content to you, particularly after I went, I went, I ghosted YouTube basically for like over, for over six months. I didn't post anything on YouTube for a very long time, which would mean that it's likely YouTube just stopped suggesting stuff that I, my content to you and started suggesting all kinds of other content to you. So the fact that you're, you're still consistently, um, so, uh, faithful to my YouTube channel tells me that you are on your, you know, you're keeping an eye on my YouTube channel on purpose. You don't seem to be letting yourself get distracted by anyone else's content. Um, and you're going out of your way to write like huge comments, long, long, long comments, paragraphs long <laughs> on my channel. Like, wow, I must get you really worked up with the shit I'm saying, dude. You know, most people, and, I, and people believe me, I hear all kinds of stuff on YouTube that really like pisses me off and gets me angry, but not angry enough to sit down and write like a diatribe, not write like a freaking essay, you know, in, a, in the comments. So, wow, you're really, um, hmm. But you're sure you're not stalking me or anything? You sure you're not stalking me, honey? Really? You sure you don't want to go on a date or something? <laughs> So yeah, that's why I'm claiming that you're stalking me. All those reasons right there. Um, <clears throat> so again, excuse me if I don't, um, I don't think that your idea of what's normal is uh, healthy. You probably don't have a very good idea of normal. Your normal is not, pro is probably not my normal or most people's normal. Crazy person. Um, <clears throat> happy. As I said, the meaning of life is to live a meaningful life. Um, to be happy all the time is not meaningful. This is not Ferris Bueller's day off. Um, and so I don't, I don't give a shit that like the fact that you're saying like, and my friends are happy. It's like, yeah, what's your point? You're not, you're not giving me a good argument against my argument at all. Cause I already said that, you know, that does your life does not need to be happy, happy, joy, joy all the time in order to be meaningful. In fact, it probably wouldn't be happy, happy, joy, joy all the time, if it were meaningful, like there would have to be some struggle and obstacles to overcome in order for meaningfulness and some dedication to a, you know, like usefulness. Per I, I said this in my, in, you know, my, one of my most recent videos. Um, let's see. Oh, and have love, have a loving relationship with their parents and wider families. Again, I have to I have to question that. So let me just, let me just give you this really quickly. Um, one of my, uh, my most recent ex, the father of my daughter, his mother was very much a narcissist. She raised him to be her little husband. She let him live in her basement his entire adult life. She never made him go out in the world and actually try. Um, she kept him sort of like he was in her little harem and she had a live-in boyfriend too. She had two guys basically constantly seeing to her emotional well-being. 
she, it was basically Norma and Norman Bates. Okay. That's what I realized when I, <laughs> when I got a closer look at the relationship between my ex and his mother. Um, it was basically Norma and Norman Bates. Um, she leaned on him as an emotional crutch, um, all the time. She was very abusive in a certain way. Maybe not physically abusive, but psychologically and emotionally abusive to her son. He was older than me by a few years. So uh, he was still living with her when he was like 40 years old. In her basement. Um, that's, a, that's abusive. She never, she, she basically tailor-made conditioned her son to never leave her side and stay with her and be her partner, you know, until she died. Um, and therefore she kind of robbed him of having a, a life of his own. Um, he did not have a good relationship with her. He did not have a loving relationship with her, but he thought he did. You get what, I, you see what I'm getting at there? He, he absolutely thought he had a great relationship with his mother and his mother thought that she had a great relationship with him, but they did not have a good relationship with each other. They had a very toxic relationship. And this was not just my observation. This was also observed by a relationship counselor who sat down, not just with myself, but with uh, my ex and with his mother and spoke with all of us together and individually. And then he, when in an individual uh, meeting between he and I, he tipped me off to the fact that, you know, my ex had narcissistic personality disorder, which he almost certainly got from his mother who had, who definitely had narcissistic personality disorder. It, again, it was Norma Norman Bates, psycho. You understand? Just like how Norman and Norma Bates probably thought that they had a good relationship with each other. They absolutely did not. <laughs> um, just like, you know, Alfred Hitchcock shows in another one of his videos, uh, Frenzy, the guy who goes around strangling and raping women in London. He gives you a window where you, a little a short period of time in that video where you see the killer interacting with his mother. And it looks on the surface like they have a very loving, good relationship with each other. But we know that that's not the case because this dude absolutely hates women because he goes around raping and strangling women. So... I don't give a shit that you're telling me in a YouTube comment that you have, first of all, I have to question if you even actually have friends. Secondly, you're telling me that they're happy doesn't matter. That does not mean they're living a meaningful life. In fact, it suggests that if they're, you know, if they're happy all the time, it suggests that they're not living a meaningful life. Um, and, uh, you're claiming that they have a good relationship with their parents, a loving relationship with their parents and wider family means absolutely nothing to me. First of all, uh, unless, you know, unless you're really like all up close and personal, how would you really know? Secondly, <laughs> like secondly, uh, yeah, a lot of people out there think that they have, if you're just, you're probably basing a lot of what you know of your friends' relationships with their parents on what your friends are telling you about their relationship with their parents. And a lot, there are a lot of people out there who have narcissistic parents that don't realize that their parents are abusing them and that they, their parents, if you're, if you have a parent who's a narcissist, they don't love you. They can't, they just, they don't love you. They are incapable of it. They'll never love you more than they love themselves. That's not love. So they don't love you. Um, parents supposed to love their kids enough to further their kids' best interests over, you know, the desires, the personal desires of the parent. So anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, so <laughs> right there, uh, I'm just picking apart that sentence. Stupid. Yeah, you are a stalker, by the way. <laughs> some of them are single and some are married. A couple of them have been quite successful in their chosen careers. I got into this in the video I posted earlier today. Um, I don't care how successful they are in their chosen careers. That doesn't necessarily make their lives meaningful. You understand? There are lots of people out there who have very successful careers and the career is entirely selfish and self-centered. It doesn't, it doesn't, um, it's not useful. Again, what are the, what are the, um, what's the definition of, what are the requirements for meaningfulness? It has to be serious, purposeful, useful, important, 
right? There are lots of people out there who have successful careers and the career, whatever their work is, it's, it's not use, necessarily useful or purposeful or important or serious. How about like successful porn directors? Guys who make pornography for a living and are really, really good at it. Maybe there's a use, usefulness, I don't know. I don't think there's a lot of meaningfulness to be derived from that, that particular profession. And again, um, if the meaning of life is to live a meaningful life, then there are a lot of people out there who are living for their careers and probably very successful at their careers. They're still not living a meaningful life. So, moving on. What makes you think that every normal person on this planet desires to have a family above everything else? Well, for starters, let's just go ahead and say that most people on the planet are normal. You know, you're going to have your outliers here and there, but like I, th I think most people would be able to agree, right, that most people on the planet fall within this, uh, you know, on the spectrum, they fall within the, um, the range of normal, normal desires, normal temperament, um, so on and so forth, normal upbringing for the most part, so on and so forth. All right. Most people on the planet end up having a family, you know, they end up settling down with a partner and having kids. So yeah, right there. The fact that most people on the planet end up settling down with a partner and having children and having a family. And most people on the planet could probably consider to be quote unquote normal means that normal people, most normal people want to have a family. <laughs> like <laughs> the proof is in the pudding, honey. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just right there. It's just what they do. Okay. It's not like a rare occurrence for people to settle down with somebody and have kids. Is it? It's the trend. It's what everybody has. It's what most people have done since people started doing things. All right. <laughs> wow. It's just, oh my goodness. When's the stupidity going to end? Uh, let's see. Do you not think that there is something really wrong about claiming that everybody has the same ambitions and values as you? And if they don't, then there must be something seriously wrong with them. Um, I First of all, I don't think I, cl I claimed that everybody had the same ambitions and values as me. I think I did claim that people who were smart <laughs> had the same ambitions and values as me. I did say that there were some people out there who um, wouldn't, who don't, like, who, who don't want the same thing. But I think the implication was that like, if they were smart enough to sit down and think about it for a few minutes, they would come to the conclusion that the most meaningful life that they're going to have, like the gold, the real gold, the real, the best experiences they're ever going to get out of life is having a family and raising kids. Um, that's not going to be everybody. I don't think I claimed everybody. I think I said everybody except. And then I probably said, uh, I believe I said something along the lines of like anybody with two brain cells who isn't a psychopath, something along those lines. And I said, even the some of the psychopaths would probably want to have a family, right? So yeah, again, um, the reason why, so, and that's something that I wanted to kind of circle back around. That sort of, that sort of uh, echoes the first sentence you said which is why I wanted to circle back around to it is like, there's a reason why most people in our species choose to have families is, you know, it's, it's actually probably, the, it's likely the most meaningful thing you're ever going to do. And there's a reason why if you went around and I think I, I the way I worded it was something along the lines of if you went and asked most people out there who have a family, have had a family, but also did some great thing, like walked on the moon I don't know, uh, invented something, blah, blah, blah. And you 
ask them, you said to them, like, you have to choose. You have to choose between having a family or doing the great thing. You can only do one or the other. You can't do both. I believe that I said that I bet you mo like, they would all choose to have the family. Maybe I should amend that to say most of them would choose to have the family. Is that more to your liking? Hmm? Um, but, but again, I would have to venture to say that like the ones that choose not to have the family are, in my opinion, probably not psychologically sound or too intelligent. Um, but that's just my opinion. Let's see. And I already made, I, I, I've given you my arguments for why I think that. So I, do I really have to make them again? Um, I gave you my arguments with the video I made earlier today, you know, comparing Amelia Earhart to the mother of Adolf Hitler. Um, Amelia Earhart, yeah, she did a, a, an impressive thing. You know, she was this woman who decided to do her own thing and fly planes around the world and, you know, disappeared one day. And she's an inspiration to girls who want to do more than uh, have babies, get married and have babies. But she'll be forgotten. All of her achievements will be forgotten one day. What, maybe a thousand years from now, now maybe two thousand years from now, it will happen. Eventually, this species will forget Amelia Earhart ever existed. One way or the other. And there have definitely been people, women like her out there, who've done equally as amazing things, maybe a thousand, two thousand, three, four, five thousand years ago. And nobody knows their names. Nobody knows what they did. Nobody knows anything about them because they're their story lived on for a while, and then it was forgotten. It just faded away. However, the people who out there, you know, the women out there of the same generation who chose to have children likely made a much bigger impact on the world and therefore had a more meaningful life. They likely made a much more, a much bigger impact on the world because they produced children who probably produced children, probably produced more children. They, those children all had impacts of their own on the world. And then also, again, I think I made the, I made the, um, the argument that they also passed down their DNA, their mitochondrial DNA. Whereas a lot of women out there like Amelia Earhart, who did these, this one great thing, but didn't have kids, um, you know, they didn't pass on their mitochondrial DNA. They didn't pass on their DNA and so again, like she'll be completely forgotten in a few thousand years. Whereas women of her, of Amelia Earhart's generation who chose to have kids, at least some piece of them will remain long after Amelia Earhart is gone and I mean, totally gone. You get what I'm saying? So again, if we're talking about the bigger impact on the world, it's the women who actually chose to have children and not to like go be a badass somewhere. They are the ones that have the bigger impact on the world in the long run. And maybe even in the short run. And so therefore, um, in my opinion, they're the ones that have the more meaningful lives. Um, so yeah, so that's why I say like you either have to be a psychopath or an idiot to not want to have the family because that's ultimately going to be the most meaningful thing you can do. In the long, in the long, long run, at the end of the day, at the end of everything, that's if you want to live a meaningful life, which is the meaning of life, it's the whole point. Then you, you'd have. I don't know what your alternative is to having the family, that's any better than the family. It's, it's just not. There's nothing out there that's better than having the family and the kids. If you look at it from the point of view of like, oh, who makes what? What makes the biggest impact on the world? Well, the people who you know, push the species forward into the future and the DNA forward into the future. They're the ones that make the biggest impact on the world. <laughs> anyway, all right. Um, whether they do it badly, poorly, or, or they do it well, you know, if they raise their kids poorly, they can still make a, a huge impact on the world. Like, again, the mom of Adolf Hitler. If they do it in a, if they do it well, they can make a big impact on the world like, I don't know, like the mom of Martin Luther King Jr. 
Although, I don't know. There's probably better examples. Um, could it be that it is precisely... I'm going to just finish up this paragraph and then I'm going to stop and I'll make another video for like the next paragraph and maybe the one after. Could it be that it is precisely this way of thinking that causes you the difficulties you're experiencing in relating to other people and to find meaningful, genuine friendships and relationships or to find success in a profession? Oh, honey. Hmm. <sighs> Let's see where to begin with that. Um, no. First of all, no. That's a big fat F and no. Big fat fucking no to that. Um, I've had very meaningful, genuine friendships um, over the years uh, through very much my own fault. Um, I will say I'll take responsibility for losing a lot, like letting a lot of those friendships kind of fall by the wayside, but I will, uh, if I can blame it on something, I will say that it's to some degree, probably because I have been diagnosed with some ADHD. And I also think that I'm probably somewhat on the spectrum. I've always been a shut in of a person. I'm not great at communicating with people. And also I get really down on myself in terms of like, it's been so long since I talked to them. They probably don't want to hear from me. I'm, they probably would do better without me as a friend. <laughs> like literally I've had these thoughts. Like I've, and it doesn't mean I don't think about people and friends and people along the way and wonder like, how are they doing? And so on and so forth. But, um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm bad at keeping in touch with people. And I do kind of assume that people have moved on and had, have started their own lives and families and so on and so forth. And they don't really need me hanging around being weird. Um, I'm just, yeah, I'm just exceedingly bad at keeping in touch with people. That's one of the biggest, uh, and it's like, where did you get this notion that I don't have meaningful, genuine friendships? I've had very meaningful, genuine friendships. Um, yeah, particularly, through high school and some of college, but then like we went off to college and my, you know, different colleges and stuff. And we just fell out of touch. Um, friendships and relationships. Although like, you know, at least one high school friend I stayed in touch with for years and years and years. Like I went to her baby shower and her wedding and stuff. So it's like, <laughs> Um, we're on the outs with each other right now, but we've been on the outs with each other in the past and then got back together and we're friends again. So, um, but that's just going to happen when you have long-term friendships, isn't it? You know, sometimes you're going to argue with people. So yeah, I don't know where you get off suggesting I don't have any meaningful, genuine friendships. That's way off point. That's just super, that's actually super inaccurate. Um, I would say right now I'm, I, I, but you're right. Like she's probably the, like the one friend that I have had long-term. Um, and everybody else. Yeah. Again, I'm just, I'm bad at keeping in touch with people. And also my interests are typically not the interests of anybody else. So for example, one of my biggest interests is shutting down a network of pedophiles. Most people don't even want to talk about pedophilia. It makes them uncomfortable and queasy. And to be honest, I don't like, I don't have a television. I don't like watching TV. So I don't like talking about stuff like the newest TV show, which is what most people talk about anymore. Oh my God, did you see the newest episode of blah, blah, blah? And I'm like, no, and I don't care. You know, if I were being truthful, that's what I would say. <laughs> like, um... So yeah, sorry. I'm just, it's, it is kind of a little bit of, it's a mixture of things. Part of it is I'm just not like most people that I meet. I don't have the same, um, interests and, um, I'm for the most part, not always, but for the most part, I'm very happy just kind of being on my own and reading stuff and learning stuff. I do get dreadfully lonely sometimes, but I know that I don't need friends to fix that um, because I've been, you know, in long-term relationships, romantic relationships where I didn't really hang out with friends, but I had like my guy there every day 
at the end of the day, at the end of, you know, the work day. And that was enough for me. Uh, do, 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 and relationships. Yeah. Like, oh, and, oh, and so the genuine relationships. So I've had good friends. I've had good people that I've been friends with in terms of, um, in terms of like romantic relationships. No, I think the track record is very much like pretty much almost every single dude I've been with. You're right about that. I haven't had very good romantic relationships, but that's also because I ha I've been set up to not have them. And this was told to me literally by a therapist. Like I was not raised by good parents. I didn't have good parenting. Um, a lot of the parenting I received was quite selfish. I was raised to be a cheerleader for my mom and sort of like reflect back to her all the things she wants. You know, I was not encouraged to know me and I was not encouraged to be strong in myself. I was, I was not encouraged to, um, let's see, what's the best way of wording this? I was encouraged to be whatever somebody else wanted me to be in order to please them. All right. That's the kind of rearing that I got. Very narcissistic. And if you ask any therapist worth their salt, they will tell you that if you're raised by a narcissist or two narcissists, you're likely going to end up in romantic relationships with narcissists because we look for the love that we know, right? We look for the devil we know. So I'm most familiar with highly narcissistic people. So I do end up, tend to end up in romantic relationships with them, unfortunately. And when I look back at the track record of every dude I've ever had any kind of like um, fairly lo like long-term romantic relationship with, um, they've all had sort of a Norman Norma Bates um, thing going on with their mother. They all have the same telltale signs. You know, when I realized this, it was like, ding, 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 ding. When I first started learning about narcissism and cluster B personality disorders, I was like, wow, pretty much every guy I've ever dated or been in a long-term relationship with checks off almost every box or if not all, all the boxes, uh, for, for being narcissists, having narcissistic personality disorder including having the really unhealthy, um, inappropriate relationship with uh, one or both of their parents. So yeah, you're right there, but it's totally the wrong, like for the wrong reasons. So um, wrong about, you're wrong about the friendship thing. I've had very genuine um, friendships with good people that through somewhat my own fault, um, somewhat just life, um, I let some of them slide slip through the, the cracks. When it comes to romantic relationships, I was basically set up to get into romantic relationships with, with jerks. Um, and so because of that, I'm hesitant to get into any more relationships since the last one, which was, let's see, like six years ago now, <laughs> something like that. 2019. So not, not quite six years, five years. Um, and yeah, so that's the end of that. That's the end of that uh, paragraph. I'm just going to end the video there. Yeah, you're a stalker, dude. Uh, just to you know, reiterate how I started this whole thing off. You are a stalker. You really are. <laughs> uh, why do you write these huge essays to me in my comments? Why do you why have you been clinging to my YouTube channel for like years now? Most people move on even from really good YouTube channels. Um, most people find other content that excites them and interests them more within a few months. Um, but you keep, you keep coming on back, turning up like a bad penny. And yeah, so, all right, I'm going to end this one there and I will, I'll tackle the rest of your comment later. Don't worry, but it's getting late. I'm getting sleepy. Good night.